Hello, this is Ron Clark, bringing you the sixth installment in my series on my little book, Love Letter to a Dying World. Today's topic is resonance and dissonance, and self-crafting of the personality. I uh, hope you enjoy. Please let me know what you think. Um, yeah, until next time, bye-bye. Resonance and dissonance are the lifeblood, so to speak, of the sentient self, of the personality. Uh, the, the sentient self exists in a realm of significance. Everything is significant to the sentient self. Every word someone speaks to you comes with significance. Everything you see, touch, feel, hear has significance. Uh, for example, you see the color red. That has a physiological effect on your body and your psyche of stimulation uh, that is universal. Uh, it affects you because it has significance. Things have the significance that we ascribe to them. They do not, uh, in particular, have their own uh, essential significance. Uh, they have a significance that we ascribe to them uh, by our emotional response. We interact with significance through resonance. By resonance I mean uh, our mood changes, um, our vibration changes in reaction and response to the significance that we perceive. Uh, the greater significance, we change more. Less significance, we hardly notice it. But it still it registers. Uh, it was significant. It had an impact upon us. Duke says we resonate. We resonate with. Uh, so what we perceive is changed by our perception because it resonates with us as well. Um, so this part of how everything is connected in a very real way. Everything affects us and we affect everything else. Now dis dissonance is pretty much the opposite of that. Dissonance is where I say, no, this is me, I, it's, I'm not going to go that way, I'm not changing in that direction, I'm reaffirming my sense of self. So dissonance makes things more solid, more compact, more separate, really, uh, from each other. It's the personality that actually does the resonating. It's, it's the personality that produces the response to the environment. So, what we are going to do this time is look at our personality, both the positive and the negative aspects of the personality, and we're going to start making changes. We are going to start self-crafting our personality. This is basic hermetics. Number one in hermetics is know thyself. And this is an opportunity, well, a demand that we come to know ourselves, both the negative aspects of ourselves and the positive aspects of ourselves. Both of these are important to us. In the personality, the negative and the positive are, in general, unintentional. We don't think, oh, I'm going to be an asshole to that person. No, it just sort of happens. Or we don't think necessarily at all, this is a situation in which I can express compassion. It just happens automatically. So these are unthought through aspects of our behavior. So our work is the personality. We're going to use the powers of the sentient self in resonance and dissonance. We can use these. They aren't things that just automatically happen. We can make them happen, and we can take advantage of their happening in very organic ways. Now, Barden talked about the black and white mirror, of the soul mirrors, initiation into hermetics fairly early on in the text. Uh, I put it later here in this sequence because I feel it's important 
that we understand and can sense and feel these different aspects of self before we work on the lower aspects of self. And we can also use the abilities and the, the, the powers we have learned so far in our work. So, the first work will be introspection. You know, know thyself. Um, deep introspection on what we think of as the negative aspects of our self. And we're going to make a list. We're going to take pen to paper and write down a list. Don't type it on your computer. Write it down. Um, and we want to really examine ourselves. Use our discernment. This power of discernment is important in this process. Analyze who we are, what we are, how we are uh, throughout our daily lives. And make this list of all the negative aspects of ourself that we can perceive. Now, the list doesn't have to be huge, doesn't have to be short, it has to be exactly what is appropriate for you. And in making this list, you've got to be honest. You have to be utterly honest with yourself about yourself. And this list has to be of aspects of yourself that you perceive as being negative. Not what society tells you, or anybody tells you, anything like that. It is just your own analysis of yourself. That's it. Make it be honest and utterly, radically honest with yourself. So, you have the list, nice lovely little list of all your negative traits. Now, you're going to make a list of your positive traits. And you have to be just as honest with yourself, just as critical of yourself, and thoroughly examine who you are day to day, throughout time. Place yourself back in past experiences and look at how you behave and why you behave that way. Really analyze both these negative and positive traits as closely as you can. Ferret out their root causes uh, in both the negative and the positive traits. So, you have a list of negative traits and a list of positive traits. Now, we're going to use the power of resonance to make changes in the negative traits. So, choose one negative trait from your list. It doesn't really matter whether it's a minor negative trait or a major negative trait. They will all be different. But choose one. I suggest you choose one that uh, the changing of this trait will make a noticeable difference to you. So you can really track your progress. So, start by meditating on this negative trait. Really get to know it, inside and out, top to bottom. And once you've done that, you will <clears throat> know, <clears throat> essentially, what initiates this trait. What, what is the, uh, uh, the trigger for this trait, and how it arises, and when it arises, under what circumstances. So with all of this in mind, you need to pick uh, a, a trait a positive trait to replace the negative trait. Uh, remember, the negative trait is 90% unintentional, unconscious. This positive trait is going to be intentional and consciously chosen. So, when the negative trait begins to arise, you have to be in that moment in your head. You have to be in that moment where you are observing it being triggered, and you have to, at that moment, say to yourself, no, no, I'm not going to allow this to arise in this way. I am instead going to do my chosen positive alternative. I'm going to bring that forward instead. And it has to be in that moment that you make this choice and then follow through with it. Stop yourself, choose 
and follow through. So, for example, let's say I have the negative habit of interrupting other people when they're speaking, of asserting my opinion to override what they are saying. Um, and uh, let's say uh, this came from childhood. Uh, I had to uh, uh, talk loudly and assert myself when I wanted to be heard. And it became a learned habit, basically, and basically just a habit. So, when I feel that uh, arising in me, when I'm going to want to just jump in and talk over somebody, I will stop myself. And I will instead listen and let them finish talking and express themselves. Then I will go ahead and say what I have to say. I have essentially broken that habit and replaced it with what will be a new habit. That's the, that's the trick here. You, you stop the old habit and replace it with the new habit and you stick with it. So you have to be committed to this process. You have to decide, really, really decide that you are going to keep with it no matter what uh, until you feel that your negative trait has been changed. Uh, it may take a million tries. It may take two tries. It really depends on you, your commitment, uh, how fast you uh, can accept the new programming so that it is intentional instead of unintentional. But again, you just have to commit to doing it as many times as it takes. Now, once you finish with one negative trait, move on to another and go through that list of negative traits and transform the ones you want to transform into positive, intentional alternatives. And when that is done or when it feels appropriate to you, begin working with your positive traits. Now, the positive traits are, for the most part, just as unintentional as the negative traits. So the task here has to be to make them intentional. Uh, that's very magical, believe me. Uh, making intentional positive traits can be quite magical and transformative, not only to yourself, but to those around you. So, when you feel a positive trait coming up, and through meditation on this trait, you will know when it's triggered and how it transpires, etc. So when it arises, you are in your head in the moment that you recognize that triggering of the positive trait and you say, yes. That's all. You basically, you just say yes inside. And you intentionally carry out that positive trait. See, that's the, that's the basic um, goal here, is to intentionalize your personality to where your personality is a tool that you use to express your true, deepest self. Okay? To express your true, deepest self with intention and consciousness. So those are the basic tools and the basic process. You go through your negative traits and you go through your positive traits and you come out with an intentional personality. <laughs> it's not that simple, of course. This is a lifetime's worth of work because the personality is always changing. That's the nature of personality and resonance. You know, we change constantly. So there's always going to be new negative traits arising and always new positive traits arising. So we need to make them intentional and take your time with it. Be kind to yourself. Be patient with yourself through the process and have a good time. You know, it's, it's, it's not necessarily exciting, but it's very rewarding work to do. It's true magic.
the essence of magic is transforming of self, not the world around us, but self. So, happy self-crafting.